From the creators of the original Cheat Sheet Rankings, this is the Fantasy Index Podcast. Brought to you by Fantasy Index, the original and best since 1987. Now your hosts, Luke Wilson and Colt Williams. Hello and welcome once again to the latest installment of the Fantasy Index podcast. We are here with you tonight to talk about starts and sits for week two of the fantasy season. Aren't we, Colt? Colt Williams with me again. I am Luke Wilson. How are we feeling tonight, Colt? How how are, how are you feeling heading into week two? I'm feeling good. I have... Uh, quite a few shares of Christian McCaffrey. It sounds like a man who has a few shares Ooh. of Christian McCaffrey and Puka Nakua. Um, yeah, so so yeah, uh, it's things aren't looking so smooth. How much um, are you drinking lately, Colt? Yeah, uh, well, you know, um, so <laughs> it's not it's not looking good in the Williams household uh, as far as uh, as far as that, fantasy goes. Like, that was the play. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um it, it could be going better let's just say injuries have, have really plagued my team uh but how about how about yours you got any chris mccaffrey any any puka i i i dodged all the puka i i got no puka so that is it turned out to be good i mean normally you would say oh that's not good mccaffrey did get me a couple times i lost one league by eight points i won the other one by two so you know could have been worse yeah, speaking of injuries, what uh, what do you you mentioned you had some news for us on the injury front. Where are we at on on the various? I did. I'll kind of blitz through it, a little injury blitz. Uh, just a few names that have been ruled out already so far uh, this week. We're recording Wednesday night, so anything were to happen after that, obviously check your check your waivers, check your uh, team. But David Njoku, he's out with an ankle injury here for week two, and Raheem Mostert already out for Thursday night football against the Bills. That's uh, I know Jalen Wright. I, I'd be looking at him. Jeff Wilson? No, Colt. Devon oh. A. Chan. Colt. Oh, Devon A. Chan, the guy who's a game time decision on oh. Thursday with an ankle injury as well. Um, yeah, that one's a bit of a bummer. He'll play. He'll We're play. D- he's got to play. I know he's going to play. I, I can I can, I can, can feel it. I need him to play, so he's got to play. Divisional game. You, you'd really hope that he, he'd be out there for it. Um, and it's in Miami. Like They don't have to travel. Like It's a little easier. He rests even more. He doesn't have to walk around on the plane or nothing. Like He was not in a non-contact jersey today at practice, so, right? There you go. There you go. Christian McCaffrey uh, heard two different reports uh, at, at different times. He's dealing with that Achilles tendonitis, I believe it is. Oh. And <laughs> Kyle Shanahan said uh, he's a long shot for week two, but he also had a limited practice here today. So, it's like you would think he would be out if he was a long shot for week two, but the cool thing is he doesn't play on Monday Night Football. He plays, I think it's the 10 a.m. or whatever it is, the 1 p.m. games for Eastern Standard Time. Uh, yeah, so you'll know the only game that I've played so far would be the Thursday Night Football game. So at least you can audible this time. If you got Jordan Mason, take your victory lap. Uh, Justin Fields, he's expected to start in week two. And Puka Nakua, we just mentioned him. He went on IR. I think we men- might have mentioned that on the... Uh, the last episode, but uh, just in case we missed it, but now the report's coming out, he could miss more than four games uh, is what Sean McVay is saying. So not great. Uh, Kenneth Walker, Roma Dunze, Jake Ferguson, and Jordan Addison and T Higgins also missed practice on Wednesday. So not good for those guys who were all drafted in every single fantasy league. So it sounds like what you're saying is that my Jordan Whittington start of the week is <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding folks. Jokes, only jokes. So speaking of, well, you we you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, talking about Puka Nakua earlier in the week. So week one's in the can. Yep. It's overreaction season, big time for for certain fantasy players. Some people keep them a more level head, but I've seen some people already saying, "Oh, uh, what do I do with Chris Olave? Uh, help!" What I I wanted to take a minute and get your your opinion. What are so, so several offenses underperformed in week one, obviously. What what is an offense as a whole that came in under under book you know under projections for for what we kind of generally thought they were going to do in week one? What's one that that stunk it up that you are not worried about? And then let's do also one that you are are already starting to get worried about, even though it's only been one game. Yeah, I would say the one I'm not worried about. Uh, let's let's go ahead and be on the positive side. Would be the Cowboys. 
they won this game here against the you know against the Browns. Browns have a really good defense. We we talked about it uh, kind of all week long. I think that you know the two focal points that make the offense move, Dak Prescott and CD Lamb, were both looking at their agent saying, "Hey, give me a contract, give me a contract." And it went all the way up until the wire uh, before they got that deal done. Now they can both focus on football, focus on what matters. And I think that that was actually a pretty huge part. I, I, I don't think that people really realize that. And on the, on the field, I mean, it was kind of evident. They didn't really fully need the offense there. But Dak, he's coming out, give you a 10-point fantasy day. Uh, you know, CeeDee Lamb finds the end zone. So, uh, actually, no, I don't think he found the end zone. Yeah, Cooks, I mean, Cooks. five five for 61, yeah. And then you know, Cooks found the end zone. But it, it wasn't really a great performance against a really good defense i expect better things going into the future yeah people say yeah 33 points what, what do you mean they underperformed but they they only yeah. got two off two touchdowns on offense and rico dowdle had a very tame day jake ferguson didn't do did like nothing and then got hurt mm-hmm. no cowboys unless you were fortunate enough to start like brandon cooks you know really did anything for you in week one certainly underperformed what you were, were hoping for my offense that i'm saying eh, 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 let's not let's Relax, everybody. Like like Aaron Rodgers once said, relax, folks. Yeah, R-E-L-A-X. R-E-L-A-X. Let's R-E-L-A-X on the Kirk Cousins Falcons, guys, okay? I know it was – I watch, again, I watched that game. I watched like 60 yeah, sell snaps. Me. The Steelers' defense is just good, okay? Like they, yes. they, they're – it's a great unit, and they showed up in week one maybe more than any other unit in the NFL, okay? They, they went to Atlanta – on a mission, and it was mission successful. They they just took it to the Falcons, and I like l- just look at the talent. Like Kirk Cousins last year, or last you know, two years in Minnesota has been a metronome, uh, especially you know before going down last year uh, for, for the for for the Kevin O'Connell passing offenses. We have to assume we're looking at a similar scheme once this offense you know has its feet under it with Zach Robinson as the OC. Bijan Robinson, you know, I believe in Drake London. Kyle Pitts, the offensive line is good. Like, the worst case scenario here is like, and, you know, yeah, the Falcons did not run much play action in week one at all. I don't think they ran any, in fact, which has people saying, oh, was something wrong with Cousins' Achilles that they they don't want to run him around. Worst case scenario is that's true. They park him on IR for four weeks, and you've got Michael Penix out there probably doing fine. Probably, you know, holding, holding, holding down the shop, okay? So I'm not. I'm just not. I'm not worried. And Kyle Pitts even got a touchdown. It was like the first one he scored uh, <laughs> since like pre-COVID times, practically. So so that was good. Yeah, I I I see what you're saying with the Falcons, and I'm not going to pander to you exactly. The I like all of the auxiliary oh, pieces. Are you, I are you not? I don't. Quite an I don't like Kirk okay. Cousins. Okay. I at least what I saw in Week One, like okay. the pass rush and the de- the defense. Are legit, both of those, and that's going to rush him. But I, so I, did you not know, score a touchdown. We're on, we're on Twitter all the time, and we, we see these things. It's like these clips of Kirk Cousins just like not using that planting foot, which was his Achilles foot, to make these throws. Do you know who their leading receiver was in Week One? I believe it was a young fellow by the name of Ray Ray McLeod. <laughs> Twenty-seven-year-old Ray 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 McLeod. Yes, um, hey, I Ray mean Ray can play. Baby. Why? Why is why is Drake London getting three targets? Why is Darnell Mooney getting three targets? Why is is Kevin or, or Kyle Pitts getting three targets? Like it, it doesn't make any sense. Ray Ray, Ray, Ray McLeod got double the tar- targets of any of their playmakers there uh, that I just named, and like that that's a huge red flag for me. Um, it all comes to Kirk Cousins. If he is healthy, and maybe it was just the Steelers' defense, and maybe it was just the pass rush, then I, I need to see it in week two. I really need to bounce back sure. here in week two, and I'll be sold. Like I said, like everything else, Kirk Cousins has to uh, has to bounce back. I would say when T.J. Watt and Casey Hayward are <laughs> trying to eat your face on light on national television, you are going to spam the check down and not wait for Drake London and Kyle Pitts to finish their route ten times out of ten. But but we digress. Who is your offense that even at, even though it's only been one game, you're like, who oh boy? Uh, also, Kirk Cousins plays on primetime here on Monday Night I'm Football. I'm not saying so, anything about you know. week two. <laughs> uh, who am I worried about? Uh, well, I kind of already mentioned uh, the Falcons there, but I'll go with uh, the Bengals. You know, they got a lot of people who were drafted high. You've got Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Joe Burrow, and then 
I'm sure they were drafted in most leagues. The combination of Zach Moss and Chase Brown, like we saw, right. and we just saw Joe Mixon. He what he did on the Texans, and you could argue that that offense, like moving from one to another, as far as how the offensive line works and yeah. the the pieces that are around them, it's yeah. the same system in a sense. And Joe Mix, they really need Joe Mixon in this offense. I'm worried about it. Uh, Burrow, he's saying that his uh, his wrist isn't bothering him. You see him on the side line. I saw the clips again. He's holding a Gatorade bottle, and he's just like he's he's rolling his wrist, which I get. You're trying to work on it. It's not like you can't, uh, and you do whatever you can to try to make it better. But that's that is a an offense that I'm pretty worried about, especially in that division there. Yeah, um, this is it's it's just kind of a gut thing. It's it's you know, and and hey, gut based. Go go with my gut can get me in trouble sometimes and when we you know when we get to starts and sits we're going to talk about my starts <laughs> from last week and i'm going to have some apologies to make and i'm sorry but yeah my gut on the Bengals is just not good right now like there, there's a, there's a stagnation kind of casting a shadow over the whole thing for me right now like yes like, like yeah burrow was hurt last year and you know that 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 trip things up for the for the 2023 Bengals. It's been some. It's been one thing or another since the Always Super Bowl hurt. run. It's been, yeah. It's been it's been Chase missing games or or the 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 constant Higgins soft tissue stuff and then Burrow last year, and now we've got. I mean, maybe maybe Higgins really is hurt. I mean, I, I I'm I'm sure he has some sort of issue going on, but the day that Chase on you know the the Friday before the season opener comes out and says, well, you know, basically says because of my contract, I'm going to be limited this week. <laughs> like that's that's basically what he said. And then, like an hour later, Higgins says, "Oh yeah, by the way, I'm not going to play." Ah, something about, and then, the, and then they just they go. It, it was a low effort. It was a low energy effort against the, the Patriots week one. Like losing to the Patriots is red flag numero uno. Like and, that is so bad. And I mean, honestly, I've all summer I've been like, you know, Jared Mayo has been the heir apparent in New England for a long time. Maybe they're not going to be that bad. Maybe they're going to come out and, and really play some ball. They certainly did week one. So that one, I'm like, let's just maybe the Patriots win seven games. Let's not mm-hmm. rush to judgment on the Patriots. But I mean, the Bengals. Th- this is their their Waterloo against the Chiefs here in week two. Like. Even if they don't win, they got to hang in this game. If the Chiefs come out and beat them thirty-eight to ten, what are we? What, I mean, what's the? And and then the Ravens are two and zero, or and or the Steelers are two and zero in the division potentially. It's it's going to be it's going to be hard question time in Cincinnati for sure. Zach Taylor, like I said, he's going to need to talk to a realtor. Um, so yeah, the, the that's that's legit. The offense that I saw, not not going far, not not, not leaving the AFC North. The offense from week one that I'm like, yeah, this is not good. Cleveland, uh, you know, and we, <laughs> the two other, the, the only two offenses that were worse, arguably, were the Giants and the Panthers. We already had no expectations there. But the Browns, obviously, Amari Cooper, David Njoku, even Jerome Ford, like there was a fair amount of fantasy capital tied up in this offense. And there was a fair amount of, well, how bad could Deshaun Watson really be? Week one was a preview. <laughs> Week one was a preview of how bad he can be. And now they go to Jacksonville, a Jacksonville team that just played the Dolphins tough as nails mm-hmm. on the ground. On the ground, they gave up 340 to Tua through the air. But that was mostly in the second half. Now the, now Cleveland has to go to Jacksonville, and they got to go play in southern Florida early in the season when their conditioning is not so great. We've seen, like just last year, the Broncos <laughs> went to Miami. Week two did not have the lungs for that for those, for that type of atmospheric game. And it was it was a it was a disaster. I think the Browns are going to get embarrassed in week two. Um, and I, yeah, it's time to be very concerned that the Brown. I mean, hopefully the Browns will sit Watson if this is if what he showed us in week one is real, because otherwise, oh God, what are we doing? Yeah, I don't know who, whether it's the GM, the owner, the head coach, has the stones or even has yeah. because it, it's a, there are a lot of jobs on the line if you set. If you set Deshaun Watson, I still think there is a an outcome where he's okay for fantasy. Like you don't look because his rushing Maybe. potential, but but, but yeah, I mean, as far as Cooper, I mean, does it save Njoku? I don't know. As somebody who was pounding the table for Amari Cooper, I am certainly certainly have uh, red flags on this entire offense. Like I, I'm really worried about it. Maybe when Nick Chubb comes back, if he comes back after four weeks, it's looking like middle of the season. Um, so maybe he can get it moving, kind of like we were talking about with Joe Mixon and when he was on the Bengals. If the Browns are two and six, though, do you, I mean, do you really can you even justify bringing Chubb back? Like, is, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so 
Um, yeah, I just wanted to touch base on some offenses that were maybe people had some questions about. Uh, if, if you have questions about any uh, players, offenses, you know, what we're thinking going into week two or beyond, get at us on Twitter. He's at underscore Colt Williams. I'm at DLuke87. Hit us up. All right. Starts and sits of the week for week two. Colt, why don't you lead us off with your QB of the week to start? I appreciate you passing it to me. I am going to start with my quarterback. Yeah, I'm going with Matthew Stafford. We talked about him uh, as one of our stream of the week candidates. Uh, Matthew Stafford at the Cardinals. This is the second highest over under of the week at 49 points. That's a that's a pretty good line. I th- either way, you, there's going to be a lot of fantasy points uh, involved if that's the case. Stafford, I feel like, is a lock for 300 plus yards. Gives him pretty safe floor there. Um, but you're looking for a couple of touchdowns. We were talking about Arizona. They did. They just don't have the pass rush like the Lions do. And pass rush seems like a very important, like the trenches here this year, um, just looking at it on both sides of the ball. We're talking about Kirk Cousins and, you know, against the Steelers. The Lions, like I said, they they were they were <laughs> at Stafford's throat, and now he gets the Cardinals, who I think just simply their defense is nowhere near as good. So, yeah, uh, you're hoping for a couple of TDs through the air, and I think he's pretty much a lock for a, a quarterback 12 or better finish here in Week 2. We'll say that the Cardinals defense does tend to play a lot more zone than the Lions, but you know, when when you're dealing with a defense that does that, you want anticipation routes, option routes, and that's the, the Cup Stafford special. So yeah, Cooper Cup should be wheels up, and uh, yeah, love the play. Uh, for me, I, I kind of went back and forth because I almost I almost felt like this was a cop out, but it just felt right. I'm gonna say Baker Mayfield at Detroit. Uh, yeah, the the same Detroit team that Matt Stafford and Cup especially just diced up. Uh, it just feels right. Mayfield, the pro football focus charted him as the biggest overperformer of his surrounding supporting cast, uh, his teammates, in week one of any quarterback in the league. He was fantastic. And it was, I mean, again, kind of like the, what I was saying earlier with the Patriots. We don't know what the commanders are. A bunch of new pieces, new head coach, new everything. It's all new. The commanders might stink. I mean, they, they, they probably do stink. So him shredding that defense at home, in the opener, I mean, so what? We're going to find out here in week two, and I think we're going to find out that, that yeah, I mean, Mayfield post-canalis is going to be fine. Um, and, I mean, he was he was just here. He's, he's This could be a chip-on-the-shoulder type game for Mayfield. The Bucks got knocked out in Detroit last last year, and Mayfield played a heck of a game. Kate Auten played a heck of a game. Um, I think, you know, he's back for, you know, a little bit of vengeance. You got to the docket before me because uh, Baker Mayfield is certainly somebody who uh, who I would I would like to put in there. Yeah, Mayfield, I, I feel like he, he's kind of a no-brainer here this week. At running back, I'm going with Jonathan Taylor at the Packers. Now, you kind of, you DM'd me, said, hey, this guy was a first-round pick. Like, you can't possibly do this. I pushed back I argued, on this, folks. I fought for you. I fought I to argued, make this man take a real stand, and he wouldn't do it. I argued, well, his ADP was 13, so some leagues he was in the second round. No, I, I'm just kidding. But no, people really are. I, I So this is the thing. The Packers, they gave up the seventh most rushing touchdowns last year, and their poor, and their poor rushing defense was on display here with Barkley in week one, three touchdowns to Barkley. I mean, people are worried about Jonathan Taylor, believe it or not. I mean, Anthony Richardson, Rushed yeah. for more yards than Jonathan Taylor. He got absolutely zero targets in the passing game. With Malik Willis at, at, at the helm of the Green Bay Packers here this week, I'm expecting a positive game script and a lot of Jonathan Taylor. The NFL schedule makers sure sure did the Packers a favor, huh? Hey, we're going to open for, for you with Saquon Barkley and Jalen Hurts, but don't worry, <laughs> after that you get Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor. <laughs> like, yeah. What, what, what did the Packers not do? Send them. A, I've got to see week three. Didn't send them a – yeah, then they're going to play uh, – McCaffrey comes back and they play and they play him. Um, no, that that's yeah, that's 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 str- that's strong money. I thought the Packers defense played well in that game, but Saquon was just better. And I think Jonathan Taylor is, if he's not every bit as good as Saquon, he's so it's so close that. I, and and I, I I think the Steichen offense, the Steichen ground attack with Richardson there as a you know as a threat to keep keep things keep defenses honest, it's a great play. They already play. They play uh, the Packers play mobile quarterbacks the next two weeks after playing Hurts, playing Richardson. They get they get your boy Will Levis. I we like mm-hmm. to say he's mobile. Hopefully he can be. And then Sam Darnold. I mean, 
Remember when he led the NFL in like rushing touchdowns, like through the first whatever it was, four weeks or something like that? Ran for three touchdowns against the Dallas Cowboys once upon a time. They lost that game. Um, <laughs> right. My uh, my running back start of the week. I'm actually gonna say it's a whole position group. Commander running backs. Okay, the Commanders are at home for the Giants. The Giants. Just had a heck of a time start stopping the run against a team that hates to run the ball. The Vikings don't even want to run the ball, but the Giants just said, no, 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 it's okay. You, you Really, go ahead. Run the ball on us. It's fine. Aaron Jones went for 94 yards on 14 carries, and that's Aaron Jones. I mean, he's still he's pretty good. But the Commanders featured the running backs in their offense last week more than a lot of people expected and kind of you know fulfilled my – theory that yeah the reason that they were okay with getting rid of Jahan Dotson who was a malcontent or whatever I don't, don't really know what happened there there were rumors that uh, he popped off of the mouth my theory was that you know Brian Robinson can catch the ball a little bit and then they bring in Eckler they're gonna throw to these guys 54 percent of Jaden Daniels passing yards in week one went to Brian Robinson or Austin Eckler so I think these guys have high total yards floors they have high PPR floors if you have one start them here against the Giants they could have huge days yeah, Eckler and Robinson combined. They had 101 uh, receiving yards, eight total receptions. Like that. That's this is exact- oh seven total receptions. That's exactly what you would want. But chunk uh, plays, you know, just yeah. chunk plays, and then uh, what would expect to be a positive game script here. Uh, the, I almost put I, I almost put Daniel Jones as my quarterback start of the week, but I couldn't possibly uh, come oh. here next week with any kind of uh, w- hey he was, he was quarterback on the line one type of. He was the quarterback one in week two last year, uh, and if there's ever a defense to do it against, it would be it would be the Commanders. I, I, I'm not sure they're fully intact, but I I didn't have that. Love the running back start of the week at wide receiver. I'm going with DJ Moore at the Texans. Ramadunze. Th- this is kind of a I guess a situational who do you, who do you have around you type of situation. Ramadunze. He's almost certain to miss the week. He's missing practice here on Wednesday. And if he does play, he's going to be very limited at the at the absolute best. Keenan Allen, he was shaken up in the game. He's nursing a heel injury, the same one he had in training camp. Yeah. And your body doesn't really heal the same at 32 years old. So in a game where the Texans are favored by seven points, I expect to be more passing than the 92 passing yards that uh, Caleb Williams threw up in week one. DJ Moore seems like the only bright spot on this offense. I'll be talking about a few different Bears and Texans and these other matchups throughout the rest of uh, my list here. And it's the same heel for Keenan Allen that actually ended his 2023 season early. So it's <laughs> it's officially like a chronic injury type of concern here, or at least in the early going. Yeah, with Odunze almost certainly out, the Texans are, are probably going to – give Caleb Williams a rude awakening to what the NFL – I mean, the Titans already did, but the, the Texans are going to double down here. Yeah, the Colts got 27 points on them. Anthony Richardson could not complete anything within 30 yards of the line of scrimmage uh, against the Texans. And, I mean, yeah, he, he missed some throws. But the Texans defense the Texans defense played well in week one despite those 27 points. Um, yeah, the, the Bears are going to be in catch-up mode. Caleb's going to be running for his life a fair amount. And there's going to be some YOLO balls to DJ Moore. So I I like that pick for sure. My wide receiver start of the week, I am going to go with Chris Godwin, a guy who I was, you know, credit where it's due. I was out on Godwin. I'm not strictly back in. Okay, let's let's just uh, hold on. I'm not strictly back in. (laughs) But looking at what Cooper Cup just (laughs) – Looking at what Cooper Cup just did to this Detroit Lions defense, I, I like the Mayfield play. That ball has to go somewhere. It, make, it just makes too much sense. Godwin comes out and, and has eight catches for 83 or 84 yards last week and a touchdown. The Lions, the, the Bucks have no will to run the ball. They're not good at running the ball, and the Lions don't allow you to run the ball. So it's going to force the ball into the air. makes sense that Godwin's going to be a benefactor. I like the play. Yeah, I can't really say too much more on it. I love Godwin. I, I like Baker this week, uh, and, yeah, Godwin for life. So um, at, at tight end, I'm going with a guy who basically just had a career game. Uh, I'm going with Colby Parkinson. I the you, I have to go a little bit deeper and tell you that he's on the Rams. He plays the tight end position, and he's at Arizona. And uh, he's a millionaire now. Yeah, he's a very, very rich man. Um, yes, he, he's coming off his best game of his career, uh, four receptions for 47 yards and no touchdowns. And you might be like, I don't, is he on my fantasy radar yet? 
I would say yes. Matthew Stafford, again, I've already mentioned it. He's going to throw for 300 plus yards. A lot of that is going to go to Cooper Cup, but all of it can't go to Cooper Cup. There's got to be some some other yeah. pieces. You, you got some Demarcus Robinson, definitely no Jordan Whittington, and then some Tutu Atwell and and combination of Tyler Johnson. But Colby Parkinson is a guy who, like I said, he was on the field for 88 percent of the snaps. Like he's going to be out there, and yeah, I'm saying another career game for Colby Parkinson here in Week Two. Let's just say it, career game. Uh, so you're going back at the defense that. Dalton Kincaid just played against in week one. Bold. Some people might have said that. Dalton Bold. Kincaid, uh, he had, I think he had no targets in the second half, which was kind of weird. That was that, that's, that was just pure fluke. Dal- Dalton Kincaid will be back, folks. Don't rest assured. This one, I, I, I kind of feel like I'm cheating, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give my guy, like and then it. I'm gonna throw out a, a real spicy one. My tight end start of the week is Brock <laughs> Bowers. I know he just had a great game in week one, but he is a rookie. He plays for an offense that only scored 10 points. And now they get the Ravens in week two in Baltimore. Like, that's a no-joke matchup. Baltimore just shut Travis Kelsey down. So I would not I would not fault somebody for saying, whew, Rock Bowers just had a good game. He, I probably need to not press my luck. I need to I need to consider sitting him here. The, 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 the Raiders showed us they're ready to feature Brock Bowers in this offense, period. And... Are they, is it going to happen every week? No, of course not. No tight end hits every week. But just just the statement that in his first game th- that they were willing to give him eight targets, he caught five of them, I, I think it was for like 58 yards, That, w- that with De- with Devontae Adams uh, in as his primary target competition, that's a big statement, okay? That's, 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 that's for real. So uh, Bowers is a big part of this offense, I think, going forward, starting now, like starting last week, and I think he's got a nice floor. But if that's a little too, you know, tapioca pudding here, I'll say Kate Otten. I'll go all the, all the bucks. Let's say all the bucks. Kate Otten had, like, the, the game of his career in Detroit in the divisional round last year. Uh, he's constantly on the field. And there's a good chance that he's going to, you know, catch a ball near the goal line. Good things can happen then. I, I don't remember where I heard the stat, but I heard the stat of Brock Bowers had those eight targets. The only other tight ends to have eight or more targets in their very first game, TJ Hawkinson and Kyle Pitts. So good company, I would say, Mostly, to be in. Mo- Pitts certainly in his rookie year for sure. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, if you can get a rookie year Pitts out of out of Brock Bowers, I think you'd yeah. be pretty happy. 100%. Um, I I would definitely start uh Brock Bowers over Colby Parkinson, but I, I would I would be hesitant with Brock Bowers. The tight end landscape is not great in general, but the Ravens are one of the best against the tight end. Um, they scheme against them, and so that that gives me a little bit of hesitation, but. Brock Bowers isn't every single tight end. He he plays like a wide receiver. So uh, I'm comfortable throwing him out there and just hoping for the best at the tight end position, which is what you should do every week. I'm surprised at what I'm seeing for your defense start of the week. I'm curious to see what you're gonna if you're gonna pivot or what you're gonna say here. Why don't you why don't you, why don't you lay it on us, Colt? Well, it's it's less about the defense. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe we're just confirming uh, which one I have here in the docket. But the Colts defense at Green Bay. Mm-hmm. That's who I have. Yep. Yes. Um. I mean. I don't really like the Colts defense, but I like them a lot more than I like Malik Willis. Let me give you some stats from Malik Willis. And this is all contingent if he starts the game, which I'm pretty confident he is. Jordan Love, they were saying, is going to be three to six weeks. And now Matt LaFleur is like, yeah, no, he he could be a game time decision. No, he's not. You're you're just pandering. You're not. You're just, yeah, you're trying to throw Shane Steichen off his off his game. Malik Willis, some fun facts. He started three games in the NFL so far. He has never thrown for over 100 yards. He's never thrown a touchdown, and he's thrown three picks. It, Malik Willis, I remember this guy, he he was almost a first-round pick, and then like right up till draft day, things that were going around to different GMs, he ended up tanking in the draft, and rightfully so, from what we've seen so far. If they win this game, it's going strictly through uh, Josh Jacobs. Jo- the same Josh Jacobs, who is now limited with a back injury, so that's great. Mm, fun. Um, yeah... Malik Willis, you wouldn't be – if you were trying to describe Malik Willis to a friend who'd never seen him play before, uh, <laughs> store brand Justin Fields is maybe as, as charitable as you can be. Uh, I, I mean, I can't believe – I'm not sure that Willis will start. I, there's, there's a part of me that thinks certainly when the Packers see him taking first-team reps in practice this week, they're going to get cold feet, and they're going to say, uh, never, Sean, Sean Clifford, where's Sean Clifford? Bring him to me. Yeah. So um, – but yeah, even if it's Sean Clifford, I, I don't hate the start in Green Bay. That's I'm not crazy about that. But actually, I, the Colts 
yeah, the Texans put 29 on them, but the Colts played the, the Texans very tough uh, in week one. There were turf issues. There was a, it's a new turf in Indianapolis. People, Players were slipping and sliding left and right on that turf. But, but the Colts played them tough. Yeah, Mixon got them for almost 180 yards, but the Colts defense actually showed up. Uh, my my defense start of the week, I'm surprised you didn't take either of these. So I, I'm, I'm throwing them both out there. My preferred start of the week is Jacksonville. Jacksonville at home for the Browns, where the Browns are not just with Deshaun Watson's ability per se, but also just the mood. Like the Browns as a whole have to be very down in the dumps right now, let's say. So – uh, and the and the Jags defense was nails against the the Dolphins for most of the way. So they're at home again. Like I said, now they go from playing in you know they 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 summered in West Virginia is where the Browns have training have off season activities. Now they, then they go play their home opener in Cleveland. Now they got to go to Jacksonville in September. Okay, I don't know if you've been, but uh, it's it's a bit different than Cleveland. So not great. Yeah. So I think I think it's going to be a bloodletting, and uh, the Jags could shut them out, or it could be like three points. Uh, and we just saw how, how the Cowboys pass rush feasted on Deshaun Watson. But also, if somebody's already got the Jaguars, the Chargers going to Carolina, that seems like a, you know, every every bit as much of a potential massacre, if not even more so. I went with the Jags because they're at home. That's, the, that's really the only reason. I love Chargers at Carolina. Panthers have a ton to prove in this game. And Jim Harbaugh, you know he's licking his chops. You know he's like, oh, man, I'm going to be 2-0. and This is just – this job is too easy. <laughs> <laughs> this job is too easy. I should have been in the NFL the entire time. Right, exactly. um, yeah, no, I, I, like, I like the Chargers more than I uh, – if we're ranking them. Uh, I like the Chargers more than the Colts, but I, I do like the Colts more than the Jags, but I like the Jags as well. Um, let's go on to sit, shall we? Let's get pessimistic. I am going with a guy who I need to see it with my little eye, Caleb Williams is my sit of the week. Yeah. It is just, yeah, it feels a little, I don't know. Again, it's funny because we were all really, really excited for him to start the season. For we're sure. like, oh, there's never been a, a 101 in the NFL draft who has had all these kind of playmakers around him. And, well, now they're dropping like flies. He's lost a, a wide receiver and a half, I'd say, uh, at this point. I can't possibly roll him out there. Again, the 92, 93 passing yards, whatever it was, certainly not enough uh if it all goes to dj Moore, i yeah i'd be super excited i, I like dj Moore here this week because the game script the game script and yeah losing two other wide receivers but uh this one right here just seems you know yeah. i i would start a lot of different streamers like both of our starts of the weeks mayfield and stafford justin fields versus denver i'd go yeah. as low as that That's uh i'm not necessarily dropping caleb but if i don't see anything here he may hit waivers in a lot of leagues no, for sure. And yeah, the, you know, <laughs> as hyped as he was, it was fair to have high expectations and, 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 and excitement for week one. Yeah. But yeah, rookie quarterback in the, in the modern landscape of the NFL. I mean, Jordan Love got to sit for three years behind Aaron Rodgers. Even he, I mean, we forget he was pretty crappy through eight weeks. I mean, the, you know, the he, people were dropping him. So, um, yeah, especially with the Dunes and, and Hallen banged up at Houston. Stay far, far away. Caleb will be fine in time. Don't bet on him here. Best case is like a, a touchdown and two picks, maybe two touchdowns and two picks. Um, so, yes, stay away. I'm going to say Joe Burrow. I mean, we were just touching on it, like, uh, you know, talking about the the Bengals. So the Bengals, we didn't even mention earlier, the Bengals have now a, a serious reputation for, like, early season struggles. This, this, this makes three years in a row – that they've started off the season on the wrong foot. And now they get the Chiefs in Kansas City. Like, I, I just I can't trust it, man. The Chiefs' defense is good. Yes, Lamar, you know, kind of <laughs> ran him ragged last week. I just I, I don't take a lot of stock in, in, in something like that where these are two teams that are playing as if they're going to meet in the playoffs because they really might, and they're just – they're not going to show each other – more than they have to, and that includes the Chiefs' defense. Okay, they're not. They're, there's no way the Chiefs' defense played the Ravens in Week One like they will in January. That same thing could be true here. It could, but with with what with how the Bengals played in Week One, I'm sorry. Especially Higgins is almost definitely not going to play. No, thank you. Find find another way. Yeah, I when I think of Joe Burrow, I think of a tweet that I put out after the Super Bowl. I, it was something along the lines of, "Oh, it's a young team. They'll be back." And I'm just thinking about people who said that about Dan Marino and 
like they they didn't tweet about it. They wrote it on like I don't know their locker wall or a chalkboard or something. But nevertheless, it, it's like you see the path and you see the the skill position players and the talent, but it's just not coming together. Yeah, Joe Burrow. Would you go as far as going to a Justin Fields or Baker Mayfield? Mayfield, I would start for sure. Stafford, yeah. I would start for sure. Um, really. If Higgins nope. is active, I, I think I would go over Stafford. But it, but it's cl- and we shouldn't be having this conversation with guys we're picking up off the waiver wire for a quarterback who is drafted as the quarterback five or six in your league. You know, we shouldn't. Like, be. I agree that we, we sh- shouldn't be. <laughs> but here, but we, here are. we are. <laughs> here we here we are. I mean you know, that I'm i just I got to go with my intuition at a certain point and. Yeah, it is true that last year the Bengals kind of snapped out of it in time for the, like mm-hmm. the 49ers game, which was a big game, big win for them uh, back when Burrow was still healthy. So there, there is that angle to this as well, but it's the Chiefs, man. I mean, I just, I just yeah. don't trust it. Um, yeah, I on the road, it's 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 a gut thing. It got, got me in trouble gotcha. though. So hey, take that with a grain of salt. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, Javante Williams, my running back set of the week. They're playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. God. This is a whopping 36 and a half point over under. I will take the under. Um, that That is not a, that's, yeah. that's, I mean, the Steelers defense, they are legit. Um, you know, I, I haven't seen anything from Javante. You drafted him with enough draft capital where you've got to keep him. But I will say in about half of my managed leagues that aren't dynasty leagues, um, Javante at waivers and a lot of them like people are, are okay. really worried. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, you would think I'd play with just a whole bunch of <laughs> really bad players, but he's still starting he, running it, back. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. Po- probably probably still started. I'm here, but the longest but pause he, ever. <laughs> I mean, he just get, he got outrushed by Jaleel McLaughlin oh, no, yeah. in week one. Sure. He got absolutely no receiving work, two targets, one reception for zero yards. Like give me give me nothing instead. Yeah. So I don't I don't think I'm getting anything. <laughs> He's riding the bench. Um and against this the Steelers defense, yeah, I can't possibly start him. Yeah, glue him there. I'm not I mean, this guy is be- is better than Javante Williams, we're pretty sure. But my set of the week is gonna be Rashad White. I kind of already telegraphed it here. The Lions going against the Lions is nice, because you know, you know, the players that you want to upgrade and the players that you want to downgrade. And you're just not going to run on, on, on the lions if they have anything to say about it. And, you know, unless like, you know, you're the 49ers or, or a team like that the Buccaneers offensive line, especially when it comes to running the ball is still not very good. Rashad white isn't terribly efficient in neutral matchups and this ain't neutral. So yes, yes, he could get there. He can make his day in full PPR on some receiving work that could ab- absolutely happen. And if, again, if you're in a, a full PPR, league scoring environment then you have to adjust this advice from like sit him to don't expect much basically but you know even that bucky irving is already getting he already he had buzz coming in it got louder after week one so yeah i'm staying away from from rashad white here i do not think he gets the touchdown he needs to save his day bucky irving had triple the yards per carry that rashad white had in week one the Tony Pollard effect, the change of pace effect, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, all of a sudden Rashad White has a, has a bit of a volume problem uh, potentially to worry about. Yeah, this next guy, uh, DK Metcalf, he is my ah. sit of the week. I, I yeah, I have yeah. him in a lot of leagues because I, I just saw him as value. Week one, he got the Patrick Sertan treatment. I mean, absolutely basically shut him down, three for 29. Yep. He's out there all the time. Obviously, you know DK Metcalf. Everybody knows DK Metcalf. Yep. Uh, it doesn't get any better for him in week two. He gets Christian Gonzalez. for He's a cornerback for the New England Patriots. He in week in week two or week one, he said Jamar Chase is not getting a contract against me. That's exactly what he said. And then I saw this tweet as a tweet at uh, Carlos Talks Pats. Uh, these are some elite wide receivers that Christian Gonzalez has uh, covered on multiple routes. So it isn't like one or two or anything like that. This is like 15 to 20 uh, routes. Jamar Chase, three receptions, 15 yards. Uh, Garrett Wilson, three receptions, 18 yards. Tyreek Hill, zero and an interception. 
Uh, Jalen Waddle, one reception for 15 yards. Devonta Smith, two receptions for 22 yards. And then A.J. Brown, four for 47. Uh, he's played against some of the best in the league, shut them down every single time that he's covered them. He's he's a really, really good cornerback who unfortunately got an injury there last year. Uh, but he's he's showing that he means business. And yeah, I, DK Metcalf is a trade target after this week. Um, I mean, he goes against Miami in their secondary, but uh, I mean, we just saw Brian Thomas cook uh, Jalen Ramsey there. But yeah, DK Metcalf, I'm not playing him here a week too, if I can. The only receiver of those ones that you just mentioned that remotely profiles similarly to DK Metcalf is AJ Brown, who didn't have a great day, but didn't have you know a disaster day. I'm not yeah. sitting Metcalf here. I, I, Christian Gonzalez is a very good player. I'm not gonna assume that he's gonna strictly shadow Metcalf. And if the Seahawks want to get the ball to him, which I would think that they should for sure, then they will use motion. You know, Ryan, Ryan Grubb is you know not some old fogey who refuses to to use any of the newfangled, you know, pre-snap tricks. So I believe Metcalf is very good. I, I believe yeah. that he's going to he, he's gonna have a strong season. Uh, but I am carrying in some bias, preseason bias, off-season bias for sure there. So, um, But, yeah, the temper expectations for sure. Christian, Gaul, right. Christian Gonzalez is for real. I will say that DK Metcalf did come out and say uh, in an interview earlier this week, he said, oh, well, you know, you only got four targets. Were you kind of mad or anything like that? And he was like, no, I was happy to hear that from Ryan Grubb. Uh, they said that they wanted the focal point of the offense to be the run game. And Kenneth Walker's kind of banged up right now, missing practice here on Wednesday mm. uh, with an oblique injury. So if you were to miss the game, I'm a little bit more optimistic on DK Metcalf, right. working around, getting him right. in there. I know they're completely different positions, but um, if the focal point of what they want to do is out of the game, then it, it opens it up a little bit more for Metcalf. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was interesting to see his take on that. They're, they just want to win ball games, and so that's right. how it goes. Right. Yeah, my set of the week... Because of what he just did to DK Metcalf, I'm going to, with George Pickens. Unlike Christian Gonzalez, who hasn't quite reached the point of being a, a true shadow cornerback, although he has the potential, Patrick Sertain already is one, the maybe the preempt. Yeah, yeah, the, Mr. The, Money, the uh, financially stable <laughs> Patrick Sertain <laughs> the second is maybe like the the the, the closest proxy to like Daryl Rivas in in the league right now. Shadow corners. Well, I'm saying. Peak Daryl Rivas was a true shadow corner in an era where shadow corners were much more of a thing. It's not as much of a thing these days with how much zone yeah. teams are playing, but Sertan is the is the exception, and he will. I mean, George Pickens is all they got unless Roman Wilson plays, and even if Roman Wilson plays, it's his first NFL game. He's coming off of a high ankle, going to play like maybe thirty five percent of the snaps. Pickens is going to be in on Sertan duty one hundred percent. Now he is George Pickens. Dog content is maxed out. If you look at his Madden ratings, his his DWG is at, is is it's not even at ninety nine. It's it's at the infinity symbol. Okay, that's that's his dog content rating. So he may commit a misdemeanor crime against Patrick Sertan in this game. My my fantasy league doesn't have scoring for that. Is the thing. So yeah. Justin Fields in Denver against Sertan. Like yeah, it's just again kind of like with Metcalf after this game. The, the, the equation changes for Pickens going forward because he played great in week one. He's going to be the focal point of this passing game to the extent that this passing game passes. But yeah, here it's, it's just, it's hard to love really temper expectations if you have to start him. And it's always scary with like DK Metcalf and, and, and George Pickens. They are big play guys or can be big play guys. Yeah. Um, you know, they're not like a lad McConkey or something like that where they're catching it under underneath or they, they, it only takes one play for us to be wrong on this. Not yeah. that we're like, you know, kind of, uh, putting an asterisk next to these sets or anything like that. But yeah, I mean, it, we're trying to make the case for it and probability, uh, says that, that that's what it should be. Uh, in my tight end set of the week, I'm not sure a lot of people are playing him, but maybe they picked him up off waivers recently because they saw the injuries that were happening to uh, the room. Cole Komet at the Texans. Um, like I said, I like DJ Moore. He feels like the only bright spot there, but surprisingly, and I I forgot Gerald Everett was even on this team. Uh, he was he out snapped Cole Komet here in week one. I think it was like a 60 to 40 snap uh, share. I, I'm, I know I'm triple dipping or so on, on the Bears a lot, but again, I, I only see eyes for DJ Moore uh, until I see some kind of juice from this offense. Uh, Cole Komet, I mean, you would expect him to be the second receiving option here if, if Keenan Allen were to miss the game, surprisingly. If, if not third or maybe a limited number two with, with Keenan banged up, but 
I, I just I just can't. I can't roll Cole Komet out there. I'll go with, with Colby Parkinson, who, again, is coming off a career game, and I've already said it. Uh, I've put it into you know the atmosphere that he's going to have another career game. So, yeah, yeah Cole Komet is not, not, that, not it this 48 week. 48 yards for Parkinson this week, easily. Yeah, no, uh, Komet is hands off for probably the rest of the season, honestly, unless something significant changes for him. Um, yeah, my tight end sit of the week, I am going to go with Dalton Schultz. Uh, which, you know, the the song kind of remains the same here. Um, there's just too much competition. Like, the, the Texans came out and showed us clear as day, Joe Mixon is going to be a huge part of this offense, rain or shine. Stephon Diggs ate up all the, all the short area stuff. Nico and Tank Dell dominated the downfield targets. There's just not enough. They need another football. They need a second football on the field for Dalton Schultz to be a safe play. And here against the the Bears in 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 week two, yeah, Ch- Chica Conquo got a touchdown for the Titans last last week. It was in very tight coverage. He made a heck of a play on that ball. That ball probably shouldn't have been thrown. So th- the Texans are not going to be in a situation where Stroud is throwing off of his back foot, YOLO balling it into the end zone, hoping something good happens here. Stay away from Schultz. I just don't see it. Or throwing the ball from his knees. I don't know if you saw that play, but yeah, it was like a, it was like a really weird. I was like I was like, hey, keep going. Um, I'm I'm staying in the same game, and again, we've we've kind of hit on a lot of these players, and it, it seems like multiple dips into it. But again, I, I want to see something more. The Bears' defense, I think, is actually a good defensive unit, right. and they're my set of the week here this week. They were the number one defense last week, yep. um, but they are playing the Texans. You just kind of hit on it. You you see a lot of other pieces. You see Shroud, uh, CJ Shroud, that like he is going. It's just a good offense versus what I think is a good defense, but I I like the offense way more than I. They're already expected to lose by seven. So, yeah, the Bears defense isn't somebody I'm rolling back out there with any kind of confidence. Chargers uh, defense you mentioned earlier, please pick them up if they haven't already been picked up. Say that part again. My connection fell out. Sorry. Yeah, the Chargers defense I think is somebody you should certainly pick up if you haven't already got them. The Bears defense, although they were number one last week, is not somebody I'm trying to roll out against the Texans in Houston. Right. Yeah, no, the the Titans at home, much different animal than Houston on the road. So that's, you know, and, and a lot of te- I saw in my leagues, Bears defense got snapped up in a lot of leagues. I think I think a lot of those teams failed to check what the next matchup was when they were doing that. And they're thinking more season long, uh, which, again, Bears season long. Sure, I'm into it, but not here. Uh, my defense sit of the week, it's, it's unconventional. It's it's definitely my spiciest pick here. But hear me out. I'm saying 49ers against Sam Darnold is not the play this week. That's what I'm saying. That's right. Yep, your eyebrows are going up. That's the right re- that's the right. Was that what it said in the docket? Sam <laughs> you're like, "Hold on, that's got it. He's 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 going off script." No. 49ers are not the play for me this week against Sam Darnold the interception machine. What? So, Darnold was very sharp again last week in in the opener on the road against the Giants. Now, yes, it's the Giants. So, we sh- we we should hope that he was pretty good. But he completed like 80% of his throws. He did have an interception, but, you know, one interception, uh, that's – I can forgive that. Otherwise, very good. Dominant win. The the Ke- I, I believe that Kevin O'Connell has the 49ers numbers a little bit. He – with Justin Jefferson banged up last year, he beat them, okay? That's, n- that's not nothing. And Sam Darnold was with the 49ers last year, okay? So you got to think he has some insights having, you know, summered against – the first and second strings of this defense, he has some insights into how the inner workings of this of this offense of this of this defensive unit is. I think they're going to keep Sam Darnold's nose clean here. Are they going to win? Probably not. Like the, the 49ers are, are for real. But even against the Jets, who at home Jets Jets at home versus Vikings on the road, I'd rather start the 49ers at home against the Jets. Jets still got 19 on them. You know the 49ers did not. You know ragged all the Jets offense uh, on Monday night. So, yeah, I don't think I – th- I think you need to really temper expectations. Are you going to sit them? Yeah, probably not. But I don't think they're going to – it's it's not going to be some freight train runaway game for the 49ers defense. I'm going to say you did not sell me on that. You 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 said that Sam Darnold uh, is going to know a little bit of the out- outing, you know, the, the workings of this defense. Mm-hmm. I think it might be the other way around. They're saying – even the practice squad, people are like, hey, can I please start this game? Uh, it's Sam Darnold. I remember picking him off in the practice squad so many times. Like, please, 
Uh, I would just love to do this. Uh, the scout team, please let me just be a starter against Sam Darnold. I did like, I, I will say, I did like what I saw against Sam Darnold. And if they were to win this game, they keep, they make sure he throws the ball 20 times or less uh, and somehow pound the rock uh, with Aaron Jones and, and Ty Chandler. Yeah, Sam Darnold, as much as I love Sam Darnold and I love this take uh, because of Sam Darnold, I can't possibly support it. But as you mentioned, you're not you're not setting them. You're tempering expectations um, against Sam Darnold, which have people done that? You know, strange things happen in fantasy football, and Kyle Shanahan had nothing but nice <laughs> things to say about Sam Darnold after his one season with the 49ers. But, uh, yeah, so those are our starts and sits for week two. How you feel about it, Colt? Uh, all, we got all the way to the defense. Hopefully people shut it off right before your defensive pick. But outside of that, I'm really confident in a lot of our picks here this week. Watch that, be, watch that be your best one and they're like negative 10 like, or negative anything. It's like, you would have been better if you didn't start him. If that happens, I'm going to come in wearing a Vikings Sam Bradford jersey for the, mon- for the Monday show. Okay, pal? <laughs> so you just wait. Now Now I got to hope it doesn't happen because I don't think I can get a Vikings Sam Bradford jersey overnighted at this point yeah. in time. I'll have to go ahead and buy it now just in case. Just wear a whole bunch of copies of the DVD Mr. Glass and Unbreakable. Well, I guess he is breakable. Just like cross out the un part. Too soon, okay? Sam Bradford. Yeah. Sam Bradford didn't he didn't choose that life. He didn't he deserve him, it. Okay. He didn't deserve it. Uh, we will be back with you as always next week, Tuesday, uh, to go over what happened in week two and give you our waiver wire priority targets going into week three. All right, folks. Well, that's gonna do it for us tonight. We will see you next week. This has been the Fantasy Index Podcast. For more great content, premium rankings, and cheat sheets, head over to fantasyindex.com 